Hello everybody, and once more, it is a Tuesday. And you know what that means on Graham Cracker's channel. We are once more resuming our D&D 5e campaign, Anarin's Rest. So, if this is your first time tuning in, I hope you enjoy the nice, relaxing uh, music we've got playing for you to let your heart wander and your mind soar to warmer places. But tonight, we are once again resuming our campaign. I am Graham, or Graham Crackers. Here on the channel, we are all about playing TTRPGs, MMORPGs, and RPGs with friends. Because making memories with friends is the real treasure at the end of any dungeon. But I am joined by some lovely, lovely people and fantastic friends, as usual. And I'd like to hear three things from each of them. Who are they? Who are they playing? Where would we, the players, or our characters? You know what? Up to you guys. You... <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna be dancing. <laughs> Actually, let me rephrase. Where would you go for a beach vacation? Hi, I'm Bob. I'm on vacation. This music's nice. This is the whole session. We're not doing anything else but this. Uh, I'll be playing Build a Stone Song if we ever get past the awesome music. And given a chance to go on a beach vacation, I don't like a beach. Bill doesn't like a beach. Too much sand. It's dry, it's coarse, it gets places. No, no, no beach. Maybe, maybe, maybe a hillside with like a nice little walking path couple strawberries yeah yeah hello i'm jen i'm playing maggie or maggie the verbal druid and i think that i'll do an easy answer and a more thoughtful answer the easy answer is um she'd go on vacation wherever una is and her children um and you know una is the kind that might choose the vacation destination just be real but um if she had to choose she might see if her kids wanted to play with some of the leonid leonid kiddos and it'd be like a riverbank sort of vacation in the desert sands hey nice i'm volunteering con next okay then what's up everybody i am con i am playing goloneth larinonal your resident rogue of the elvish descent variation kind whatever and uh love the ocean and stand the beach. Thank you. All right, I'm Adam I'm playing Fru uh, and um I guess also playing of bones, but maybe towards like I'm looking at the map here, I'm cheating a little bit. Um maybe towards the bottom near the ocean, but guess what? If you're in a desert, everywhere's the beach, right? Life's a beach, man. Can you dig it? start. So eagle-shaped Maggie arrived at the shelter uh, that Rue and Goloneth had taken uh, with Beldus on her back and came in and met um, Dandrella. Dandrella? 
like it. I feel like I should get an extra D4 for remembering. <laughs> um, and uh, while all hell was breaking loose in the, the caverns, <laughs> um, yeah, right? Um, with like scary, you know, creepy monster creatures of black tar and like murderous intent uh, wreaked havoc on the city within the gates that were containing them. Um, and found out that um, uh, Karis had not made it very clear what the hell was going on when messaged from Rue. Passing the baton, he's taking it next. So the uncertainty of the situation caught us all by surprise, see? So we're taking our, okay, I'm going, sure. Uh, so, we took our... <laughs> so we took our refuge inside the safe house we were at, right? And we were all being real careful and sneaky there. And then Goloneth and I think Rue went up top to survey the area and see what they could see. And it was it was terrifying. In fact, Goloneth probably could tell it better than I could. <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty terrifying. We were surrounded. There was um, these long talon things dragging people and things all about. And um, actually, Maggie and I were on the roof, and we actually plotted uh, a path to save as many people as we could. It was a tough decision. But it was a decision we made as a group and uh we went and actually did some pretty kick-ass combat with like a narrative combat sort of situation rescued some guards rescued some people saved the day there was much praise we got gold i shoplifted only part of that is true we did get 500 gold each i remember yes <laughs> and and we gained so much experience from this situation we actually gained a bit of wisdom and a level. You know, yeah, Rue, I, Rue, how do you recall? <laughs> how do you recall that night's events? Where were you last Tuesday night, she? Yeah, see, uh, we definitely had that, what is it, the, the train cart uh, dilemma? Uh, it's like save more oh, people yeah. or save these other people uh, i guess we chose more people <laughs> yep. and then uh we decided to fight uh per usual uh and then karis was flying towards us towards the uh, pillar of light that we threw up and then uh i don't think we saw it but there was a giant baby with a 40 foot hand and or arm Golan i saw it Golan i saw it it's Did gone he sneaky, sneaky out the door Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, that's right, what? I did. It was a baby? What? <laughs> and then we found 700 gold each. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you had all been on that from the beginning, you might have convinced me. <laughs> but no. <laughs> I think we I were... Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, because Graham said baby with a question, but I have in my notes, creepy baby... 40 foot hand exclamation question mark exclamation question mark <laughs> that's from when Galena snuck out like looked around the door and had that like really cool description I don't know if it was actually a baby but like I remember those like big creepy things oh yeah around. I thought it was at the end of the episode I thought well at the end of the episode was the skeleton was the zombies and skeletons mining at something a giant skeletal hand underneath the city. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, right. Not okay, a baby. the stinger. You gotta, <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you gotta give us the stinger because uh, we're headed for the wall to try to get into the crystal caverns, where we hope that there's no, uh, or, or in the whispering halls of sounds with statues, um, where Karis is hopefully running toward us. Um, yes. Yeah, and need to get through the wall, uh, and then there was that stinger on the end. That I don't want to tell wrong because that seems really important. Sure. Yeah. Give me one second to get the yeah. right music. Yeah. Maybe I was thinking of like Akira, where is a I'm, baby? No, no, no. Listen, we are not fighting We're an army of there. toddlers. We don't have a chance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Violence is the only thing they understand. <laughs> and they're good at it. That's... I'm still trying to, <laughs> I'm still trying to get the music working. You could yeah. be like me, not hear the music and pretend that you're dancing to it. It's true, it's true. Uh, so. 
Oh, that's that's not the type of music I wanted. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. So, where last we left off last two weeks ago, not last week, at the end of the episode, far beneath the city, in the depths of the Wayne Ray Company in the Underdark, our camera panned out to a large cavern, to the sounds of pickaxes hacking upon bone resonating within the cavern itself. A figure turned towards the dwarf, Gagly, as the ooze began to kind of reshape and form their body once more. Our plans are nearly complete. Everything will be as you command, they say to an unseen individual. In the far side of the wall, a Nightwalker laughs and steps away. To paraphrase. <laughs> Still sounds better than an army of toddlers. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. I fixed the music. <laughs> Timing. <laughs> Pretty hardcore music, right? To come into it the... is. Oh, yeah. No. Found this one today. All I remember the creepy baby. It was something Kara saw. It was a kid, I think. But maybe oh, a yeah. toddler. Oh, in the, in the little... In oh, the yeah. 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 So they were two separate things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was like, what are they talking about? There was no toddler. Yes, so... Uh, the parts that Karis probably would have shared is Karis was trapped within an alternate dimension within one of the magical mirrors that were used by the ancients prior to the fall of the cataclysm to teleport between the planes. Some say you could teleport between time and places and various worlds itself. She walked into one only to find some creature or something that looked like her mentor trapped here half mad from trying to understand the hundreds of thousands of mirrors that seemed to fall from the ceiling around a clock in her face, each one of them showing a new part of the universe, an event that could happen, would happen, should happen, one of which was a simple room floating in the astral sea with a child painting. However, the child, when it seemed to get alerted to Karis's visitation and went to grab and pull her in, which she was able to dodge. And then a, a picture of her was drawn on its canvas. But... Mm. So, the group of you... Now that my portion of the recap is done, I'm going to give myself a 1d4. You'll do no such a <laughs> thing. Because I helped. Shenanigans. But I, yes. I will I will use that 1d4 for a Karis roll if there is needed. Okay. I'm just, I'm just kidding. That's I'm just fair. messing with I think it. that is a fair, fair option because that's what they would have absolutely Yeah. Decided. I'm not a crook. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh. All right, let's get some music going. And the group of you stand over the defeated corpses of these monsters. The bone, sinew, and tar like ichor coating the cobblestones beneath your feet. Be frightened, anguished cries echoing from all over the quarter of the crystal caverns but in front of you are three guards and the group of civilians that they have been protecting Karas is nowhere to be seen at the moment still flying the Magugliet on their broom towards you 
What do you all do? We found a gate in the wall, right? Yes. Uh, so you are aware of where the gate is. The eastern gate was under attack and you have no context for if they are holding or have failed. Northern gate looked like it was holding strong and the western gate is the one that you were headed to, which seemed safe. Can we get these people out? If, uh... I hold her back to the safe house. How many people in total? Two guards and seven civilians? Uh, there were three guards, and I believe there were about 14 civilians. 14? Oh, I can't. Never mind. Let's go back. We have to go through the gate anyway. Let's just get them out through the gate. Okay. Uh, folks, hi. Yes. Um, don't panic. We're going to try to get out of here. Stay with us, please. I know, that's terrible inspiration. Uh, I don't have time for a better story. One of the guards kind of speaks up. Um, <laughs> they're kind of looking both ways down the street. Oh, why are those things? Voidless abominations from the land without stars? I ain't never seen anything like them in my time, yeah? Not in our time, but in a previous time, I think where people have seen them, but I don't know if we want to find out today. And perhaps we could discuss how strange they look on the other side of the wall. I. Good plan. Good plan. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what? Uh, what's on the other side of the wall? Hopefully, not things that want to rip our faces off. That came out poorly. Um. But that's what I meant to say. <laughs> the, the temple places, the, the places with all the statues and, and hopefully the terraces too, on the other side of the wall. And we think that they're containing all of these creatures in here. No one has a better idea? Go that's team action friend. plan. I hope cars find some uh, somehow some way, but yeah. Uh, uh, gone if you want to take point and see if there's anything to be in front of us. I certainly can, and I do the sneaky sneak. Ah, the sneaky sneak. All right, can I get a stealth weapon well, from you? <laughs> of course you may. That is. Well, I rolled with advantage, and I got a six and a nine. So that's just as good as a nat 20. <laughs> All right, in total? Uh, it's probably going to be like, uh, I think, uh, 11. Let's see here. I'm having so many computer problems right now. It's okay. I, I might be able to pull it up. Uh, I, I mean, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. Uh, still plus 10, so 19. Okay, 19, yeah. But you were yeah. fairly spot on. All right. Goneth, you set forth, taking point in front of the party as usual. The streets, the sound of combat, the side streets as you pass by each one. Your training kicks in as you, you know, look stop, listen, take a quick glance using your dark sight to make sure that there's nothing coming out you or setting an ambush. You lead on. You don't encounter any resistance along the way. But there are houses on fire. The screaming has increased within the quarter echoing and resonating within the cavern itself in a cacophony of voices. The gate is about three streets away from your party when you come to a stop. In the center of the road there's one of the creatures. Beneath it is a 
dead dwarven guard. They are holding a shield almost over their torso, and it looks like it has been pierced through and into the stone that they are laying on. Holy perception check. Um, yeah. No, that's the natural one plus five for six. Time to change dice. Would you like to use yeah. your recap 1d4? Uh, um, plus five, the best I could do is a 10. Um, no. Okay. I don't think it'll get me where I need to be. That's fair. You see the creature moving over it. It's long, long lurching and slugging off of this being and it pulls its claws out of the dwarf their body kind of dragging upward and then collapsing and they reach down and put a palm over the mouth of the dwarf for a second nothing happens and the creature lifts its palm and begins to lurch away into an alleyway. Then the dwarf begins to move and convulse and then sit upright. It looks around for a moment, opens its mouth, and you can hear the sound of its jaws breaking as it slacks lower like a snake and Icar begins to pour out of its lips and it rises to follow the creature. I want to uh, knock and loose an arrow straight for its head. Okay. Would you like to use a crit or... Nah, let's roll for it. Alright, roll with advantage uh, because it has not seen you. New dice, by the way. (laughs) New dice. Good, good. That's much better. That's 15 on the die plus for the bow plus six, the 21. 21. Yep. All right, roll me damage, please. 1d6 plus two. Uh, six. All right, and sneak attack. Oh shit, that's a lot. Yep. Plus, uh, yep, 5d6. One, oh, he's got a rogue. Two, three, four. Five, six. What was my first roll? Six, right? Yeah, Yeah. six. And then another... All right, six, 12, 18, 28, 34. 34. Your arrow streaks out and catches this creature right in the jugular or not the jugger, the carotid, striking through its neck, and you hear a gurgle. And then its hands come up to kind of hold and feel at the arrow that is now protruding, and it just collapses into the dirt and dust. And, you, and, and I just mutter to myself, I just say, you will know peace. Do you continue yes. on? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I... Jen? I can wait. I, I just look back and kind of motion for the party. Just kind of give a little low down emotion for them to come up and stay back. Because I definitely don't um, I don't want to not be around should they be attacked. So I would keep them at least within my distance of 35 foot. So I could get back if I needed to. Alright. Um, am I within 30 feet with that uh, dwarf zombie um, falls. I would say that you're probably around 50 feet for okay. goal enough to get the stealth bonus of not being with a large group, um, as they have to be at least 30 feet apart. Okay. Um, but if you would like to be, you would have visual on Golneth as they're drawing their bow to take a shot, so I think at that point, if you wanted to get closer, you um, could have put yourself there. 
I don't think I would have, I would have stayed with the group. So okay. no, no worries. It will come up. Okay. Uh, do we happen to pass by the, um, what was that a clothing store or like a good store with the, that had the thieves can't on it, the tunnel to the underground? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so the clothing store is about two streets away. So about halfway to the gate from where you currently are, as you have three more streets. It's on the second street because it was at the intersection when you first kind of went through. Gotcha. I mean, Rue would probably pause and kind of like look that way and be like, as like the sounds of war are going on all around, it's like, uh, I'm having a hard time, I guess, wondering why we're, we're running when all these people could use our help. Like, if we go, like, the city is gonna die without us. Well, I thought the plan was find Karis, and Karis was at the Hall of Echoes with the Elder. Find Karis, come the- back, go down the tunnel, find the source. I was reading chat. Uh, <laughs> Deep breath. Deep breath. Almond, almond <laughs> flakes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, let's uh, uh, let's go. Guess we all keep moving on. All right. We're we're too weak without without her. That's, that's just how it is. So, the group of you continue on making your way towards the gate. About the time you've reached the gate, there's no further opposition. What you see atop the gate is Karis landing with a broom and one of the creatures. Some, several of them have been trying to crawl up and there are maybe like 30 of them crawling up the side of the stone gate in the mason work as dwarves are rolling boulders and firing quarrels down. One of the creatures kind of crests over and Karis kind of waves a hand as three orbs of fire just strike this one after the other, driving it back. The gate kind of creaks open as one of the guards begins to roll it's only like two feet they only inch it up enough as six or seven guards kind of with spears burst out to kind of give you cover to get the civilians out absolutely you know, with Karis, all the haste were... possible go, go, go. no I was just gonna say with all the haste possible just pushing helping people get through there Karis, we were worried about you, uh, I'm, and we have a plan, and I'm so glad that you're uh, here, because we didn't know where you were, no criticism intended, uh, but we have a plan, if you, uh, it's not the best plan, but we have a plan. Oh, um, well, that's wonderful, because I don't know what's going on here, but I have a hundred of possibilities that I would love to talk about. Uh, and she will fly down on her broom and like settle on the street next to you all. Okay. <laughs> so what's this plan? Uh, one of you who talked to Zendrella and understood her perhaps could, I was a little iffy on the plan. Rue, uh, Golda, didn't you say you saw a mirror in at rain, rain rates? I'm not there, am I? We caught up with you. Well, yeah, okay. I think okay. at, at the okay. gate they would have caught up to you because there's no... Yeah, no, there, yeah, there was a mirror. There was also a, um, a door. There's also my dagger. Um, what? <laughs> but yeah, there was another entrance to the Underdark. Indrell yeah. with us, right? No, no they're going back and get her. still at her house because she's taking oh. a rest to oh, so. prepare spells. 
Also, that's what um, Indrella had told us, but she's back at her place taking a rest now that we found you. Hey, you're usually the ones that tells us, but I mean, of course I want to go back for my dagger, but if that's not for the greater good, then I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying doing the greater things nowadays. Just a big, there's a smile from Maggie. Let me say that. She caught that. My pink skin blushes a little more than normal. Uh, no, please go. Dendrella was of the opinion that uh, the source of this invasion was from the Underdark and that we should go confront the source uh, at its roots. Uh, though we really have no idea what would be facing there. Uh, and I don't know if Dendrella is to be trusted. Maru uh, and Galaneth would know better. Uh, but that, so far, is the only idea that we have to do anything more than hold them off the gates. Well, she did help us out in that scuffle against her, um, her boss. She would argue with me about me calling her a boss, but I don't care. Um, so I don't know if that was a ploy just to gain our confidence, but it does seem like everything is leading us to the Underdark, whether we want it to or not. Um, whether that be something of our own choice or something of just circumstance, it seems like that's where we're headed. Now, do I think that we should fully give our trust to Dendrella? No more than I would fully give my trust to anyone I don't know. So that's that. That's me saying, no, I don't think we should fully trust her. You have a better plan at least? Oh, we got. I mean, we could. Rude, did she say that she had been into the Underdark at all? Like, do you think she gave any kind of indication that she was trying to set us up for an ambush? I mean, I personally, judging character. Uh, I. But don't recall her saying that but listen i don't i don't trust her either but it seems like you know we we followed the uh the smell of poop all the way to the wainwrights and so what you're saying that's, that's just where the trail's leading well usually if you follow the smell of poop it leads you to a butthole <laughs> sure <laughs> Maggie, are you okay? Uh, Maggie's fine. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so what oh. I'm saying, I mean, how about this? We just never let the butthole bring up the rear. Nice. All I know is we either fight up here, save as many lives as we can, and know that we're gonna have to fight again another day or we take it to him and i'm you know, i'm all i'm all for the taking it to him that was where i was at at the beginning i mean we could stay up here and fight all day long but pretty soon i'll be out of arrows you'll be out of spells and healing and we'll still have an army of these things to fight like i haven't i haven't seen an end to them or what they can do or the horrors like, I'm not sure if you just saw that dwarf, and I point to the dwarf that I just humanely put down. But the fate that lies in store for everyone if we don't end this is not pretty. It's an icker filled mouth. So I say we... I say we try to end this or die trying. I can't think of a better way to go myself. Well... Uh, okay, I could think of a better way to go, but at least this has glory involved. Harris, how strong are you? Oh, um, well, sorry, to dial back, what happened at the Wainwrights? Did, did you both cause this? No, absolutely not. Hmm. Um, well, okay, so there's this gray area, and Rue and I are all up in it. Yeah, there was this uh, this asshole named uh, Gary who who 
was very aggressive with us. And um, this is not my exit, but. <laughs> yeah, Rue, Rue's not wrong. There was there was no talking to this person. Like they, we showed up and they had violence on their mind. And well, I'm not going to point any elbows at Rue, but things just popped off. And oh, um, gosh. I'm trying to think of what Karis would do. <laughs> I think you get the love a level of stink eye from Karis that is like, I thought you were going to be stealthy. <laughs> is the look she is giving you both? I, we, we uh we we just went for answers the same as you. How do we know you didn't cause this? We were because stealthy. Because I was yeah. stuck in a mirror. <laughs> Exactly. What? Stuck in a mirror? Yeah, wait, stuck in a mirror? Hold on a so second. You found, you found the mirror, but you got stuck in it. So you were in a gray area also? Grace to fairies, I would say. I, I mean, I told you that in my when you sent to me. I said, not great, I'm stuck in a mirror. We That's thought you not, said not great. No. If, I if I recall, you said everything is fine, which didn't really make sense at the time, but we had kind of bigger fish to fry. Well, everything was not fine. Uh, I'm stuck in the mirror. I got out. Um, I don't have a lot of magic left. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around lately. I want to walk right up to Karis. Look her directly in the eyes. Because I don't know if I can trust this to be who we thought we knew. Karis? Did you see anything interesting in the mirror? Define interesting. Interesting to me? Interesting to you? A little bit of an overanalyzed response. It's kind of what I was looking for. So I think I'm going to believe that this is. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, I, I would like to um, climb a wall, get on a roof, peek around an alley. I have a sudden uneasy feeling, and I want to secure our perimeter, like all of this back and forth. I My, my, my golem senses are tingling. That's fair. Uh, easy enough to do to climb onto the roof. Uh, you're a rogue. I'm not gonna make a roll for that. These are dwarf-sized houses. So I step up. <laughs> <laughs> a slight hop. Uh, <coughs> you can see more of these creatures seem to be advancing from the portions us. of the district that you were not able to cover and that you had not advanced. You see some of the individuals you failed to save upright. Walking. That sucks. Covered I hate what I'm I hate what I'm hearing, but you can maybe proceed. Um, Why, thank you. Why, thank are, you. Are any of them heading towards us? Do I? Uh, some of them, but you could take an alley and avoid them. It looks like they are advancing on the main road. All right. I'm just going to say to the party, we need to move this inside. It's not going to be long before they are upon us. Let's go back to the safe house and regroup and reconsider whether we need to rest. Those of us who can go out and save people in the meantime, maybe should. But with Karis out of commission with spell slots or whatever he calls them, with Karis out of commission with magic, uh, we're pretty weak to go into the source of this. And as we head back, I want to uh, oh. check, check the gate, the locks, the structure the strength, the tensile strength of it to see if I need to get through it what I would need to do or gather. Sure, from the gate? Yeah. Solid steel. Uh, these Katie. are iron rod, steel bars, reinforced dwarven craftsmanship. Um, it is probably about 80 feet tall. This gatehouse. Okay. Um, okay. The gate itself is about 15 feet by 20 feet. Um, there's a secondary gate behind it. Probably can hold them. 
the gate isn't going to be the problem. Um, having seen Karis kind of zap one that was climbing up the inner walls, it doesn't look like they ever prepared for something coming out of the district or having the ability to climb. Uh, that's going to be the main issue, which, you know, adding more guards is probably the only way to avoid that or what have you, which is probably already being done from the, like, sounds of it. All right. Yeah, Question. I just, I just yes. usher everyone. At, um, level 10, clerics get divine intervention. Can Rue possibly give it a shot? What would be your divine intervention question or request? And be as specific as you can. Alright. Um, Rue would kind of take a knee. Sprinkle the... Uh, she's got some good berries in front of her. Sprinkle those down. And she's like, uh... Yandala, if you could uh, just see it fit in your divine light to help us beat back these fucking bastards uh, and give us our strength, we really appreciate it because this whole town's going to fucking die. Um, peace, love, and uh, all that. Roll me a D100. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Wait. Wait, what? It's a ten. It's a ten. Does, does that work? Uh, I. Let's see. Do you have to be lower, or can you match? Let me get some music before I answer that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good sign. It's a good sign. You gotta it? change the music. I don't know. I think I could also be changing the music for something much worse. Your deity just be like, nah. You get the you get the dial tone. <laughs> just like. That's not the music I want, but... Rue, your prayer goes out. And for a moment, it hangs in the air, desperate and worried. And you feel the sense and pangs of reaching out and having almost like you're jumping from a trapeze where there's no one there to catch you. You feel hung, stretched, as if not your body, but your spirit is being pulled away. And then in a moment, oh, that's not the music I wanted, whoops. <laughs> Yandala comes in with a sense of warmth that fill like you are a cup, it fills you. Your spells, all spell slots are refreshed for you and your party, as each one of you, one by one, feels the radiance of a god wash over you, and you look to the gate to the smoke at the other ones, and you see a crack appear in the cavern wall itself above you. One crack, two cracks, just enough to get an inch to see the sunlight. And light shines in and almost like a beam incinerates and washes the gatehouses and all the creatures each one burning up in an instant. And then it is gone. I just look at Rue and go, why did you do that earlier? That You're was just... awesome. <laughs> just ignore Scott. <laughs> I'm not kind of... <laughs> God, what a... 
It looks up to the looks up to the heavens. Uh, sometimes you need to just let a miracle be a miracle. Well, back. Later on. Uh, uh, show me how to give proper thanks for this. I think uh, if we live through this, we we just feed as many people as we can and fill our all of our mouths with uh, liquor instead of vicar. Let's fucking do this, folks. <laughs> liquor, not icker. Liquor, not icker. In the words of Rue, ramen. <laughs> Team liquor, not icker. Nice. Oh. Graham, may I ask a quick question? Sure. Does my wild shape slot also come back? Yes. Uh, for the treatment, you have all taken a long rest. Amazing. Hey. Including cars. Okay. Back to the safe house to pick up Dindrella. Dindrella. Yes. <laughs> uh, I guess do we do we trust them, or should we just go? Are they? I'm in a trusting mood right now. So, some guy just showed up and did a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yes, that's that's faith. Faith is strong. Suddenly. Fair. 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 Oh. All right. We take a gamble and we go. All right. Uh, I guess before we leave, Brew is just going to create, cast, create food and water and just give it to the people on the other side of the gate, whoever's, whatever refugees has made it inside. Sure. Uh, what's the casting time on that? One action? Uh, yes, one action. Okay. Easy enough to do, um, and you've done this several times in the past. So uh, you hand the food through the gate. Um, the three, the six guards that had come out to rush to protect while the gate was opened have fallen back. Um, they are standing in between the first and second gate, kind of forming this wood in the event if the first gate was to fall to you know five people time. They take the food and kind of slide it through the back gate to the refugees that have started to kind of gather. Um, there are a few clerics of Dumathoin there that you can see that are kind of healing wounds as some of the individuals you saved are covered in scratches, cuts. On our way back, um... I, my understanding is that the creatures are temporarily at least cleared out of the district. Um, yeah, so they are no longer on the gates, so I will say okay. they're deeper in and closer to what you would classify as, like, the source. Definitely okay. still have a presence there, but the exits to the district seem to have been cleared out oh. for the moment. Where it seems safe, so where there's not, like, you know, imminent presence of any of them, I'm going to use my decanter of endless water and shape water to try to direct water to the places that are on fire um, and put out as much as I can. Okay. Easy enough to do. Um, with the combination of your decanter and controlled water and shape water, easy enough to set the stone homes uh, out. Most of what was on fire were like furniture, hearths, that like um, but you are able to do that it's, I don't think it would take you out of, much out of your way um, as the Divine Enterprise show has kind of bought you some time uh, roll me a perception check Thirteen. Thirteen. As you set out one of the buildings, I think you've set out probably about four in total. 
in the fourth one that you set out, you can hear coughing from within. It sounds like someone who is very young. Um, giving young is a relative term. Because we've got elves and dwarves present. Um, but probably like a young adult. Um, they sound pained and a bit muffled. I swing in without hesitation. Alright. Are you going through the windows or through the doors? Uh, if the fire is out and it looks structurally sound through the doors. Alright. So, you barrel in. Inside, there are chairs, tables, um, still smoldering, but not enough to create another fire. Um, just residual heat, even after being stemmed for the most part. But there is a collapsed section of roof. Brick, wood, pillars, kind of folding a V over a dwarven figure. Um, their face is kind of burned on one side and it looks like they have been pinned. Uh, does it look movable by hand or does it look like it needs help to move the stuff on top of them? Uh, rolling our perception check, uh, we'll call this a DC 15. That's better. Uh, it's 21. 21. So, um, being no stranger to wildfire. Something's going on there, Khan, and I can't hear. And being no stranger to wildfire, you know that in the case of a collapse, if there are internal in injuries, it is very hard to recognize them from someone who's been it usually comes out once you have kind of lifted off the pillars themselves look like you and one of your party members could get this off of them the main issue is you don't know how much damage you may potentially do if there are internal injuries so that would be have to uh, be addressed as you're doing it or shortly after I call out, a little help over here. I go. We all rush in. I'm going to kneel over the person who's pinned um, and be ready with a cure wounds. Uh, if the rest of you could move this uh, off of them. Uh, so if there's a, 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 an injury uh, on the inside, I can, I can fix it before uh, Okay. Um, who is the strongest one of the three of us? I don't think. Uh, no, not me. Karish just says, don't look at me. Yeah, yeah. I do have a spell for this, though. <sighs> we don't want to use spell slots. Let's try to not use spells. All right. Mm -hmm. Um,. I will step up into the, you said it's down in a V? Yeah. Like on top of them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, is it a connected? I'm going to quick look at this. Are these like just two pieces that fell or is it like part of the truss itself that just came straight down? It just came straight down. Straight down. Okay. The V is probably their form underneath. Okay. All right, one of us gets on the corner here to lift it up. Somebody stays right here to keep this thing from tipping over onto us. And get a heave ho. Are they I conscious? Guess Sorry. Uh, hard to tell. Um, at, like, even with the smoke still, like, from being set out, hard to tell. I would say that you they are alive, whether or not they are conscious or, you know, fading in and out, a little hard to tell. So, but. 
I'm gonna kneel over them and not knowing if they're conscious or not, I'm just gonna be like, we're gonna get you out of here. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna help. We're gonna get through this. I'll go to the side. All right. Before you go there, Rue's gonna cast guidance on you and then be like, just tell me where, uh, where you need me. Uh, Rue, stand by me. Uh, Goneth, you're tallest. Just try to keep it from tipping over. And maybe, and Maggie, get ready to pull once we get the... All right. Uh, bend the knees, lift with the legs. Uh, All right. Three, two, one, irk. All right. I want a strength check from Beldus. Goleneth, I would like a sleight of hand from you. And using that guidance right now, because you got it. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I trust that number, so I'm using my D4 inspiration. All right. That's better. Uh, so my strength check is... Uh, 13 plus 6, 19, uh, 20, dirty 20. Dirty 20. And Goldeneth? Plus 10, four on the die, used my D4 for another four for 18 total. Okay. Beldus, your muscles go taut. Maybe being lower to the ground, you know, there's something to be said about that when powerlifting. But... It's with your legs, not your back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, uh, you feel, at first, this oppressive weight on this person. You struggle to lift inch by inch. You can feel sweat going down your brow. And then something gives, and you feel it moving upward, granting an inch, two inches, three inches, enough to slide this person out. Goleneth. As those inches give way, as you are kind of spotting, being the tallest one there, one of the timbers above looks like it is about to break, and you are quick enough with your hands to kind of press on the right point so that no rubble continues to fall down. You have seconds before this is going to give. Hurry up. Pull and cure wounds at first level at the same time. All right. Roll the HP. Just six. Six. Uh, their eye... So the burn is still there, but their eyes flutter open. They have these bright blue eyes, and looking at them, most of the hair is kind of burned away, but what you can see is this auburn brown hair um freckled face and they offer you kind of a weak smile <laughs> thanks we don't need to talk it's okay it's all right can i carry them yeah i'd say they're probably like 140 pounds i'm big yeah you, so. you've got this Okay. You can definitely fireman carry them. All right, sorry. Thank you. I couldn't just leave them. No. It's fine. It's good. Every life safe matters. Uh, safe house. Safe house. Safe house. So you continue to the safe house. The rest of your path is unobstructed. The creatures, once again, toward about the time that you get to your safe house, to Dendrella, they are out and about again. You see more and more coming out from around the way right business that seems to be the epicenter of where they are coming from some of them are exiting houses that have the doors busted into those don't have the claws but they are identifiable as dwarves the 
door to the safe house opens as you kind of arrive. It's been about two hours since you left to go across the district and back, taking the time to set out the houses. Dendrella is dressed in a different gown and kind of vestments. It is these bright autumn toned dress. She has the two wands and she has a spell book that's kind of tucked in behind her. As you all arrive, she throws open the door. Um, well, come in, come in, come in. Um, I didn't think you were coming to come back, honestly. That's not, that's not to say anything bad about you. I just thought, I'm just happy to see that that's you're alive. It's a fair thought, fair thought. Inside check. Sure, well, inside check. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Seems sincere. I will say this, with a twenty-four, and her being in a lodron, this is someone that has not spent time around strangers probably very often. At least to a degree where their life depended on it. The level of concern they have for you is seemingly genuine. Not tinged with ulterior motives, just really... Yeah, like, this is someone that was actively worried about you, but didn't have the capabilities to help Got it. at that moment. All right. um, I'll set down um, the person we rescued. Yeah, I, I think as soon as Dendrella kind of sees that there's an injured individual, she will kind of pull, like, a couch or, like, a futon or something out. Um, set, set, her here, set them here. Um... I'm not a healer, but they can at least rest here. Um, that should be enough. <sighs> okay. How are things out there? Uh, good news. We have the power of... Um, we have the power for God to crack the ceiling and bring sunlight down. Uh, that might have been a once in a lifetime type of deal so we have a once in a lifetime miracle on our side Rue is a miracle worker yes 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 in fact i haven't done this yet i go over and i give Rue a hug we will hug back you're now off your feet with this hug <laughs> i just look at maggie and say well looks like we're having a moment <sighs> as we should Sunlight hurts him. Sunlight hurts him. Sunlight right? Hurts that was sunlight, him. right? Or was that divine fire? Divine fire is cool too. It was sunlight because he opened the top of the right. thing, right? Sunlight. Okay. Rue, if you'd like to give me either a religion or an arcana check to identify the spell, you may. That's what I have prepared. Oh, how are they both plus one? What? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll let you guidance yourself if you'd like. Oh, that's that's 17. Oh. Uh, definitely kind of somewhere akin to a sunbeam spell. Cool. Perfecto. So, okay. So what's the plan? Are we still going straight to the main rights and going down? Uh, can we get straight to, or is there another way we can get in? It was the second entrance, right? Yes, you know of a second entrance, but you don't know where it goes or if the two okay. connect was the issue. Uh. I have a feeling that Golanef would like to go back to the Wainwrights. Just a dagger. I noticed that all of the things were coming out of there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to 
say it's it really is just a dagger i'm afraid that we might be going into a situation that would lead us to an unfavorable end i think if there was a more imagine that i'm going for the suggestion of the sneaky sneaky but i'm thinking if there was a more overt or stealth way that we can make entry into the underdark Maybe we can get the uh, dagger on the way back out. Taurus raises his hand. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I do have the capability to make you invisible for an hour. If you need to go get something, I can do that. Mm. Important is that knife to you, because that also takes away some magic that, that Karis can do. Then the other thing is, is that's a great idea. Paris, but I really don't know how these creatures sense they may be able to see through invisibility and then I'll just be dead and invisible. And that is an hour of time that we may, well, I guess the city may not have. I mean, I can turn three people invisible. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dindrella, who had been prepping the spell, because <laughs> I didn't know what Kara said for a minute, um, no. goes, um, I also can turn people invisible. Well, I think first we need to figure out where we're going and then make the plan, right? If we go into the Wainwrights and it's their exit point, then I'm not, you know, Karis, I'm not really um, a, a war kind of person. I don't know how this stuff works, but doesn't it seem smarter to not go to the place that they're coming out of directly and have to fight through all of them? We can be invisible once we figure out how to approach them from the rear. That sounded very militant. It did. I'm proud. <laughs> You've been hanging around me too long. Never. So Cars will pull out a piece of paper or a map or something and start like circling locations. Um, so we know they're coming out of here at the Wainwright business on the north side of the district. Mm -hmm. And what's our other point of attack? Well, uh, I mean, it's no guarantees, but we know of another location that leads to the uh, underdark. Okay. Um, that was that big ladder you were talking about before, right? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take us some time to get down there, but it it's probably better than a full frontal assault. Do we know if these two things connect? Uh, that is a negative. Because if we get all the way down that ladder and they don't connect, that sounds like too much of a risk. But I don't okay. think we have much choice. How fast were they coming out of the hole? I think mm -hmm. Golaneth saw about three or so of them exiting when giving it once over before they fled. Uh, are these the, but there were also the um, turned, right? The, yeah, they were the three people that had been behind the counter. Hmm. If these things don't like sunlight, um, and we do want to charge in, I guess, guns blazing, arrow, bows <laughs> blazing, um, I can make a distraction and you all could go in there. What kind of distraction? I mean, I can call down some daylight and... Oh, man. Y'all are just using too many spells. Um... Oh, this would kind of be like... Y'all go fight and I... 
uh, try and what? survive up top. No, <laughs> no. What, no. What, no. What That's do I know what of? Doing. What do I know of the Underdark? Uh, roll me a history or nature check. I'm going to go with history because I am proficient. Okay. Hey, <clears throat> Does yes. Beldus know anything of this tunnel they're talking about? <clears throat> I know it all. <laughs> What's the tunnel? <laughs> That's a 25 with a natural 20. Oh, yes! Nice. Uh, so, Beldis, as to what you would know about the Underdark or necessarily the tunnels, I think you would know about the tunnels that are underneath uh, the Temple District and the Hall of Whispers and the Hall of Echoes. I don't think you would be familiar maybe with this tunnel, which is more of a illicit entrance. Okay. Um, you okay. would know that if people typically wanted to go down to the mines or to the Underdark, they would take the waterway. Right. Okay. Um, all right, goal enough. All right, now I've got to cater this information to you. Uh, so, most of your knowledge of the Underdark comes from Telbanon and the giant tree that comprises Telbanon is that its roots reach down to the Underdark, down to the Unseelie Court and the Drow and the elves that prefer to live where there's less sunlight. Whether they are Shadar Kai, or whether they are Drow themselves. Most of the stories you have heard is it is its own ecosystem. It is foreign, yet similar to the surface in many ways. It has a lot more dangers. It is, you know, there are vampires, there are undead, there are entire civilizations buried under hundreds and thousands of years that you can find in the underdark pools of acid that are miles long giant oozes these are all things that you know you remember hearing about but one thing is particular it is very easy to get turned around when you don't it, have landmarks is it connected though sometimes um sometimes, sometimes. it is uh ca very long cavern systems that stop and that they have a finite end other times they are wide expanses of miles of you know dwarven highways or uh ancient tunnels carved by worms that connect whole civilizations um it really okay. depends all right so listen we used to use the underdark to get us from place to place unknown when we needed to get places and nobody needed to know that we got there. And I can tell you, there are multitudes of different things down there that want you dead. And that's not even, you know, the descendants from my own kind, Shatterkai, the Drow, places filled with acid, giant oozes, the tunnels. It's so easy to get turned around. Like, We definitely need to think about what we're doing and how we're getting there. And there's not even in, even any guarantees that where we go in will get us to where we need to be. Does anyone have any way to mark or illuminate the way we've been? I don't even know if illuminating the way we've been or the way we're going will be. I mean, we need to, we need to keep to the shadows and definitely it would be advantageous for us to not alert anyone to us being there i can give dark vision if that's what you mean it's more of so well it would be best if we could all see in the dark yes but more so the things that are in the dark that can't see us i don't know if that would be a better use for the invisibility spells that these two have prepared but all right make us invisible once we get there Graham, can I ask an adjudicating question uh, sure. about some real stuff before I forget? Of course. Um, so I have daylight prepared, but not sunlight. But I also didn't add an extra prepared spell when we had the divine intervention that Feel allowed us to, to add restore one everything. Can I add sunlight, even though yeah, I yeah. don't I mean, know if I would have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And to specify, 
Rue identified as Sunbeam. Is it Sunbeam? I think mine is Sunlight. Mine might be different. Yeah. Sunbeam is a radiant damage spell that also creates right. sunlight. And I think sunlight is an actual sunlight yeah. spell. Yeah. I don't think sunbeam is one that I have. So anyway, thank you. I just don't want to lose anybody down there. And this is the place for people to get lost one way or another. Sounds like we're talking <clears throat> down a long shaft and hope we don't get lost in a tunnel system that could go nowhere. Yeah. Or well, try mean, to go through the heart of their forces. I mean, there is something for uh, to be said for taking the fight directly to them. It's worked. If there was a way that... What could we possibly do to distract them? Um, I... I don't usually dabble in magic. I don't really like magic. I don't understand how the people that can use magic do use magic, and even the magic that I can conjure, I don't particularly understand it. And, Karis, I was going to actually ask if you wouldn't mind maybe teaching me a bit of magic or how to control the magic, but there is this thing... But I can sometimes do when I think about it, I can create an illusion. That way we wouldn't sacrifice any of y'all's spells, which are not arguably more effective and useful than my own, that we could maybe distract these things, get them down an alley, and then we could just slide on in the front door and then straight through the other door that leads to the Underdark and straight into, um, well, probably the pits of hell, to be dramatic about it. Um, I could I could come in, I could summon a, a, a cloud of fog. That could work also, that cloud of work. fog. I could have an illusion of a, um, I don't even know, maybe a dwarf or two walking into the fog. I don't know, we could do something. Um, well, all of the spells I have, except, uh, with the exception of invisibility, um, are more for fighting, um, I'm afraid. Um, as... That's fine. I don't, I don't want anyone to use their spells that could really help us out down there. That's the... Or... What, what I'm saying is, if we go in bows of blazing, as your friend said, um... If there are quite a lot of them, I I can clear the way for you all to get to the ladder. A backup plan's always good. If nothing else, I could just run down the alley myself and draw them off. If my illusion doesn't work, I really don't trust myself with magic. Okay. See. Is okay. there is there like a uh, a guard set up around Wainwright, or are they just like spewing forth and then just attacking? Forth. Um, I won't say it's like a constant stream. It is more of like one or two every five minutes. Sure. Okay. Oh, that um, much time in between. Okay. Yeah, like you have a little bit of leeway. It's not like hundreds of these things coming out at once. Um, that was what I was imagining, and I was like, what are we freaking oh, doing? Oh, sorry, yeah, I should be here. more specific. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was like a copious amount of these things, just like... Uh, oh, no. Uh, probably, there were originally, but once they kind of got in the city, it's more of just a self-populating thing at this point, where they're just killing people. And... So, with, with that, I'm just going to say, you know, I think that they're generating these things just as quick as they can be turned and it looks like they're coming out with some sort of predictability maybe we could just time it give them a little bit of time after then just slip in unbeknownst let's, let's time it um i think 
Wait, who's got good perception? I do. Um, I do as well. I guess Who we needs can't... to have better perception? I, mean, I, I guess I don't know if we should gave that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cast guidance on uh, whoever wants to take a look and try to figure out what the timing is on this. I'm, I'm, I'm good at looking at things. I always believed in you, Maggie. I don't know why it's past tense, but <laughs> if, that does not bode well. <laughs> if, if possible, I would like to just kind of stand behind Maggie and assist her in perceiving things, if that's possible. Just kind of point out things I notice and okay. see if see if I can't get her advantage. All right, so we'll have to go a bit downstream <laughs> to get to the Wayne Rides to be able to get to look at it. Con, you have a crit given to you by chat. Yay! And all Ooh. right, <laughs> that's a return on investment. <laughs> <laughs> I, right. I like that so ROI. Guidance, guidance from Rue, advantage because of Goleneth assisting. Maggie, make me a, a perception roll at advantage. But I'd also like for anyone that is going to help you, I would like a stealth roll. Okay, got it. Um, I got you, homie. Because I assume you are trying to be a little bit stealthy so you can kind of watch this over a period of time. Yep. Okay. All right. So I've got 13 on the die plus 10 for 23. All right. Uh, that's a 29. Oh, I love it. Gee, woo. And Rue. Oh, am I coming with? Uh, I think guidance only lasts like a minute. Fuck. All right. On stealth? Yep. No, no way. No way. We... No way. No way. Uh, if that many of you are going, are we okay with the rest of us even staying behind? Yeah, Dendrell no. has got your back. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I planned this all along. My Ooh, whole plan was to get there too. Uh, split the party once again and throw yeah. the... no, I'm kidding. Hey, wait, it's Beldus and the two uh, wizards. Oh, never mind. We're good. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Karis will stay there. Uh, I'm sure Dendrella and Karis are just talking about spells. Yeah, that's big seven. Big seven, okay. I'd be going with as well. Okay, give me your stealth check. Rue is just casting uh, Sacred Flame on their axe over and over. <laughs> I did better than Rue. <laughs> I got a much? ten. <laughs> I got a ten. Okay. You have a deep oh. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so your group average for stealth is 17. Not terrible. It's not bad. Not, not terrible. Bad. Not terrible. Who do oh, I have my to 20, shoot? My 29 was the perception roll. I didn't roll a stealth. Oh, oh, well, then yeah. roll me a stealth. Whoops. Okay. Never mind. I didn't know you needed me to. Uh, nevertheless, that is a 19. Okay. Okay. An average of 14.75. <laughs> okay. There we go. Mound it up. Yep. 15. That Ooh. sounds fair. Well, we rounded up to the nearest 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So zero. <laughs> Wait, what? No. Wait. Um... <laughs> I don't right. like this game. All right. So, let's yeah, let's get some music going again. This is the problem. Is I only have so many scary or threatening soundtracks. Actually, I think I know what I want. Hopefully it plays. Hopefully it plays roll 20. Of course it didn't. Of course. All right. So you all set out to go kind of, I'm assuming you're going by roof at this point as per usual. Yes. There we go. You set off staying as close around the corners and as out of sight as you possibly can as you make your way towards the Wainwright facility. You stop about two streets away where you have a straight on 
vision of the facility itself. The two windows are barred as they were originally. The door is open. A trail of ichor has been left. You? Dragging out onto the streets going both directions away from the facility itself. Inside, it is dark. You can see the glint of something in the darkness, but that is as far as you can get. Maggie with a 29. Ask me three things you would like to know. Um, I have to think, and you know, suggestions are welcome. <laughs> um, can I hear anything in the distance that might be threatening? Yes, in the distance. Um, How is this in uh, the direction of the facility or just all around? Just all around. Yes. Uh, oh, well, some are, I, but including knowing where the facility, like, <laughs> to see what I'm saying, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not just like uh, random. Like I want to know the like direction. Uh, yeah. Um, towards the gates, and in the streets leading to the gates, you're hearing a lot of violence still. In terms of that facility, you're not hearing anything actively fighting or any combat or any indication that there is something. From what you can see visually. Okay. Can I get a sense of whether there's this is a question to you, something that has left there somewhat recently, so I can sort of calculate in my head sure. when and like how long it's been walking, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Uh so the Iker trail on the ground leading away down the street. You kind of cast your gaze that way and you see a creature walking. Um it's within visual eyesight, so it couldn't have left more than, you know, three minutes ago. Okay. Um, and since I can see it, and I have a sense of timing on the the facility, do I notice anything now that I, I have a chance to observe one of these creatures without feeling, like, without having to immediately think of defending myself, do I see anything on that creature that seems like a vulnerability? Like, something I could exploit to try to destroy it for its kind okay uh, while not a vulnerability I, I didn't mean technically you... like yeah, yeah, yeah. formally I will, I meant, I will yeah. give you a piece of information that you may not know. yeah yeah you see something slithering between the body and the icker like just under the skin of the creature but I think there is an actual thing corrupting something innocent there. Like, the, it looks like there's maybe a parasite. Uh -huh. Regardless, they it just left, so we so can go. We go? go we go? Go, go, go? I'm going. Oh, I, I suppose we're going then. Wait. Three of you are still at the house. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> I, Almost like splitting the party doesn't pay off. All the time. Uh, I, one, right. two, three, four of us are here. Yeah, I go back to the Bellas, house to Karis, grab Dintrella. And... Oh no, no I went, went with. So yeah, it's yeah, just Karis and Dintrella who are not all right, here. Since, since they're already there, I'm going to leave and go grab Karis and Dintrella and bring them back very quickly, very stealthily. In that case, while while he's doing that, I'm going to wait and see if I could time when the next one comes out. Sure, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. Uh, with your 29, uh, looks like about every four to eight minutes okay. is when someone comes out. Um, How long is it going to take me to go and get back? Probably about 16 minutes. 16 it's, minutes. It's like eight minutes. Eight minutes. Got it. Okay. Because I assume you're getting at a kind of curve. Yeah, uh, half stealthily. Um, I did a thing. Let me make sure that's what I did. Where I took a feat where I'm pretty sure that I don't 
lose my stealth bonus. Wow, sprinting? That's fun. That is really fun. I'm, I'm looking for it right now. I just want to read it. I may but not I think have taken you're it. Correct. I was. I may not have taken it. That's what I'm checking. I think I did. Oh. Wait. No, I didn't take it. I All took right. dungeon. I took dungeon delver instead. You did take dungeon delver. Yep. My bad. Shit. Hey, dungeon delver is also super helpful. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's good. It's good also. But no, I. It's one of those things where. If I would, you know what I mean. But anyway, no, that's. All right, cool. So I am going to proceed um, as quickly as possible without being dangerously unstealthy. Okay. Like I'm, mo I'm moving at a pace where I would keep my wits about me and also make sure that I'm not going to trip over my googly. Okay. Um, I think you're easily able to reach back to Dendrella's. Karis is going to hop on their broom with my And I think Dendrella also is going to hop on the broom. And they're gonna hover with, close to the ground following you as you run through, but cutting their footsteps so there's nothing to be heard. Are they are they on separate brooms or are they just oh. chilling together? Uh you can fit two people on the broom that Karis has. Sweet. And he's up to three hundred pounds. Yeah, I'd just say, okay, follow me. And then I lead them rooftop to rooftop so we're a little bit not down, you know. We mean Across the rooftops, and then right before I get to the Wainwright, I just kind of take a knee and signal them to land. And um, if possible, um, I would like to send a message to Maggie and just uh, say, um, "Hi. Um, I don't know if you can hear me." If you can hear me, we're just going to hang out over here until you tell us it's time to go. Okay. Right. We're just going to hang up over here and tell. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. That works for me. Wait, is it no, no, message no, that... or sending? Message. I have to be within 120 feet, and I'm assuming oh, I am since I'm in the building beside yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I will wait until the I see the next one come out, and then I'm going to just in the message say go. And out loud say go. And then I just look at Karst. Did I do it right? I, I suppose I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just look at Dendrella defeated. I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> Dendrella's just like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> like, uh, but at the go, they're going to start booking it. Okay, as soon as I see them move, I'll be like, okay, I guess we're going, and then go. All right, and that's where we're going to take our break. Ah, I hate it! I know, right? Isn't it the worst? So we'll be back in eight minutes. So I hope no one goes anywhere. We'll be back soon uh, with more wonderful ways to stress out my players. So, wait, wait, what? hold on. Is it is it eight minutes there and eight minutes back, or just eight minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll see you all on season two when I have an entirely new cast. <laughs> <laughs> Please pick us up for syndication. <laughs> Please stay hydrated, everyone. We'll see you soon. <laughs> oh, my Lord.
All right. Hello, everybody. We're back. I hope you got hydrated, and I hope that you are ready for more D&D. &D. Because we are. D&D. D &D. All right. D&D. &D. It's dynamite. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying TNT. <laughs> Time to roll for a fight. All right. So the group of you rush in, timing your charge into the Wainwright Corporation um, expertly. You burst through, well, you don't have to burst through a door, but you make your way through the door. Icar is slick on the ground, um, mixed with blood. Inside, the back door is open, behind the counter. The door to the right leads to the mostly damaged meeting room. And behind the door, uh, behind the counter, there is a second door that is open, and you see a latch and kind of like a uh, openable hatch that's a bit covered in gooey black grossness. Uh, you all have inspiration from Stamosis. Thank you. Woo. We need it. Can I give the DM inspiration? I don't need it. No. no. I've got I've got four crits on the board. But yes, yes, you can. You can. But they're Riz, gonna need it. Riz can look to Galanith. Hey, uh, Galanith, can you uh, go ahead and find me a dagger real quick? And then um, this is Wainwright Company, right? Uh, maybe just rob them real quick. Let's go. I just look at Rue and I'm like, what did you do? And then I go get my... <laughs> Four to eight minutes. Four right. to eight minutes. All right, I go and on the way to get my dagger, I am quickly just rummaging through everything and pocketing whatever I can. Any, I'm looking for I'm looking for loot and intel. Yes. Most especially anything that I can get that can clue me in on what in the hell is going on right now and gold. How long are you willing to spend doing this? Yeah. Maggie continues to chant, only four minutes. We only have four minutes. We've got, we've got four, four minutes. minutes. How long is it going to take us to get through the door? Never mind. Three minutes, 15 seconds, 45 seconds to get through the door. Go. Can we look through Gregory's office? <laughs> I don't know why I bother naming any of these NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> Gaggery. Gaggery. I'm writing that down now, so I remember. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Gagri's office is behind the counter in a section that you have not explored yet, and that you don't have visual on. Okay. Um, if you wish to go in that way and just investigate then, by all means, you may do so. I just need do to know who's going where and what you're doing. All right, does it make sense... I'm trying to remember the description of the room where we had the fight where my dagger is because my goal is to get the dagger but so if i can get the dagger and come back through gangrene's office then i would do that okay uh so the room that you fought in is right to your right as you enter okay um, then i'm so roll me an investigation check okay see if you can find your dagger all right dagger 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 that is that thing's lost forever it's someone else stole no. it yeah no that's i rolled a one on the die plus five oh, no so six in total yeah six in total i find like a frog leg or some shit do you <sighs> no i don't want to use my crit <laughs> <laughs> how much better Darn. is that dagger is it worth it i i've got something for the dagger i'll, I'll be fine so um Tell me how that goes and how much time I've wasted. Sure. So, the ichor is almost like a solid three inches in the floor. Okay, like that's like. that's um, a lot. Yeah. So you begin to that's go like, like just sift through with your fingers, trying to find your dagger and hope oh you open your fingers. <laughs> as oh doing, like, ah! uh, it's like playing. <laughs> it's like playing. Who has the box cutter? <laughs> <laughs> poison myself with my own dagger. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> 
you're not able to find it. You and okay. because it is such a dark liquid, you can't even you don't you don't know if it's not here, if someone took it, or if it's just somewhere underneath. Okay. All right. So um, I just it's yeah. Take I take more than three minutes to find it if you if that is your goal. Okay. No, I'm just gonna after, and you tell me if this is allowed after, like thirty to forty five seconds knowing that we need to be on the way. I just say, I can't find it. I give up. And then I go and try and find whatever information I can and or loot on the way. Okay. About possibly how to stop whatever this is we're dealing with or what we're dealing with. Sure. Uh, what is everyone else doing while Golemeth is looting and looking for the dagger? Looking like such an angry mom. <laughs> who's super going to get you to deal with some consequences when we're home. All right, Rue. I think I'm probably still in the lobby because right there was, uh, and I'm looking around and I'm trying to take in the space. This space here, first time I'm seeing it. Yeah, so you have a basically a twenty by twenty entry. Mm -hmm. About fifteen feet from the door is the counters. Back room is about five feet from that. Leads into another hallway that veers off to the left. And then they're right directly back there. There's another door that is open that leads to the hatch. I I well with my my motherly ire uh, light sparkles up and summon my my wildfire spirit. Sparkles like conjures into being. Um, Golaneth, I'm gonna give you an option. There are tills at the counter that you can loot. Tills? Like a till that you pull out. Okay, got it. Okay. Store. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you said tools or tills. I thought oh, fair, tills, fair. but. Yeah. But yeah, fair, okay. Fair. Uh, so there are tills that you can loot, or there are also, you know, the back offices, if you would like to go there, you're not going to have enough time for both. Okay. Describe the tills to me. Can I see. Are they open? Can I see gold or valuables or anything? Uh, they look breakable. Easily but breakable, it's... but you can't see anything because they are closed. Roll for greed. I go to the office. You go to the office? Okay. Yeah. So, you pass by the tills, jumping over the counter, sloshing your feet, or sloshing... What? You know, as, <laughs> yeah, isn't that an unpleasant sound? <laughs> <laughs> As you make your way to the back office, you come into the corridor and look left. The only part of this business that you have not looked at before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you know what I realized? Does anyone know if your dagger is magical? If my dagger is magical? Yeah. Does the one that was lost. Do I know if it's magical or does anyone else know do if you? it's magical? Yes, I know it's oh. magical. Did you tell anybody? Have you ever said it's a magic dagger, or? No, I don't think I've ever specifically said you know, that. I'm gonna I mean, throw, I'm gonna you, throw you a bone here. Karis, I think, would use detect magic. Oh, definitely. Like, magic that seems like a Karis thing. Just, and think, you can tell me if you oh. want, because I only just made that connection when you asked if it was a magic weapon, which Maggie has been assuming. But Maggie can do detect magic without a spell slot. Okay. So Ooh. if Maggie noticed Karis doing it, probably would have gone, ha ah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Maggie, doing that, you, underneath all the sludge, it looks like it's been kicked underneath the table that has been capsized. The wood is, like, decrepit and necrotic and rotten you see a glint of blue magical energy in the shape of what looks like a dagger. I get my skirts up, my apron, going under the table as much as I can and grabbing it. All right. And I'm not showing it to Galanath if, if Galanath is with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, as far as I know, I'm in a different yeah, room, I think right? You would have done this after Galanath was like, ah, ah, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like, ah. It's like that, that time crunch. Like, it's in my right hair. It's like Legends of the Hidden Temple when you can't make any decisions. Like you're like, yeah. ah, ah, too much. So, all right, cool enough. You head to the to the offices. Heading down the left corridor, there are 
three doors. Two are open. Blood is staining one of them. The other two seem to be locked and shut. They are not labeled. Um, Dindrella will hop back there as well because, you know, she works here. Worked. Uh, uh, and I feel like maybe she's going to need to seek some new employment. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> and she goes over to one of the doors and pulls out a key and unlocks it. It's her office. And she kind of throws the door aside. And um, I'm going into my office. I'm, I'm just going to grab a few documents. Um, just in case. They're, I give they're, my, her, per, they're my personal documents, not... I, I give her three seconds and I'm behind her. Sure. Uh, she walks in. Uh, there are se several books. She opens up her, like, pouch. And she just pulls some of the books off of the shelves and then she goes into her desk and she pulls a few photos that there's like a photo on the desk and it's her holding like a young boy elvish um and then there's like a few other photos uh of her and like a young adult elf and then her of a elf in Teldwinon military outfits Ooh. Do I recognize any of this? It, it, there's and a lot of family resemblance. To me or her? Uh, to her. Okay. I thought you were about to pull some shit. <laughs> okay. This is your mom! <laughs> yeah, no! <laughs> <it's my> <laughs> what a twist, right? I, I always knew I had a twin! <laughs> <laughs> How weird this person, this lady has pictures of me and I don't remember being in them. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> She didn't right. react at all when we met before. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so, all right, so once I see that she's actually gathering, like, her shit, I'm going to go back and go to the door with the blood on it. Yeah. Uh, so you see kind of a desk. It's splattered in blood. Uh, looks like there was a fight here. There are documents, like, half sludged in. And there are... There's, like, a chair, a desk and a few um, piles of parchment stacked on the desk itself. I want to check out the parchment and then rifle through the drawers for anything valuable. Sure. Uh, I can't forget why I'm here. All right, let's see. So you find a total of 29 gold pieces. Platinum. Okay. I heard platinum. Uh, 20, gold 29 gold. Okay, 29, <laughs> 29 gold. Yep. And you find a small ring. It is small engraved ring. with a sparrow, sparrow in flight. Got it. Sparrow in flight. Do I know anything about this sigil? No. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pocket the 29 gold and the sparrow in flight ring. And I am going to look for the book on how to defeat creatures from the Underdark. Uh, not in this office. Uh, you don't even need to make a roll for that. It's definitely not in this person's office. Who you okay. can assume is someone who has been killed and reanimated. All right. And then I'm just going to yell out to Maggie. Do I have time to check the other room? No. Damn. <laughs> okay. All right. And then I just go, I go grab Dendrella and we join up with her. Yep. Um, this whole party. time. Rue has just been, I guess, looking at the place where the creatures are coming from. The hatch, probably. Yeah, and with their mace out and just like kind of like humming. There's a lot of man. I'm gonna let it show. <laughs> there hasn't been more threatening. <laughs> but I assume you have holy weapon off or something. No, just the magical base. Oh, okay. All right, so. With that, you all kind of reconvene at the hatch. Dendrella, oh, Maggie? Oh, just uh, when Galanef reconvenes, uh, Maggie's standing there with the knife, a little ickery, and like trying to do like the cool thing where you like flip it around and stuff, but like not really doing a very good job of it, but like <laughs> looking very smug. Roll some hands. Like, 
I want to see if you drop this back into the air. <sighs> Should I roll dexterity? <laughs> if you'd like, if you'd like, if you'd like to just do it poorly, that's. that's I will just do it poorly. Okay. I will do it poorly. <laughs> God, I just thought it was gonna be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I found you. <laughs> just. I, I, ooh, easy. You don't want to cut yourself with that. Yeah, I almost did. That was really, you know, I was trying to look cool, and I really shouldn't try to do. Here you go. Well, you well, to... you you do look cool. You don't need my dagger to do it. Very sweet of you. Yeah, it's okay. All right, fine. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I just look at it. I just I can rub it off on Beldis's. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna let that slide this time. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't think you know I did it. <laughs> So, what, what's the plan? Are we going down? I, I suppose, suppose that's what we're doing. Down we go, uh, as soon as possible. All right, um, one moment. And she thing? goes to the hatch, and Karis goes, oh, I, I, I talked on that a little bit. It is locked, um, and she casts a spell, and she casts knock, and you hear, like, a cl audible click as, like, the lock just pops. And Dindral goes, oh, um, wonderful, thank you, and pops it open, and about 40 feet down this stairways, it looks like it opens up into a small ladder that goes about five feet, and then it goes into a plateau of the stairway. Dindrella hops down with this almost innate grace of an elf, lands and you can hear one of the creatures kind of snarling at her. And she goes, oh, so you're the one that they were expecting. And she points a finger and lightning crackles out of her finger and just shoots down this entire stairway. Let's roll the damage and the deck safe. Okay. Well, Rick, strong, not, strong opening. Yeah, four is not going to be a, a saving throw. I'm gonna um, pat Beldis on the shoulder while this is happening, and I'm gonna cast a cantrip that I forgot the name of, um, that will give you a 1d4 on the next saving throw that you have Oh, to resistance, Ooh, cool. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna do a dex saving throw for you. 28 lightning damage uh, as this Good. thing just Whoa. explodes and splatters like the side of this wall. <laughs> Hurry on. Um, I'm assuming that bought us a few minutes. Four to eight. Go down. <laughs> Go down. <laughs> Go down. Go down. Going down. Going down, 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 and a burning ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you all kind of head down Dark. the stairs. Um, they are slick the with anger see. and blood. You know, all sorts of grossness. Um, the stairs kind of spiral, heading about 60 feet in a straight line, and then curving at about a 65 degree angle, and then doubling back. As you continue downwards, you, you guys are heading at a pretty fast pace, I expect. Um, could I get a deck save from all of you? A I deck would have save. Renewed, and I would have renewed resistance. Okay. Kind of no saving throws. Okay. Ten on the die plus six. Sixteen. Okay. Oh wow, that's good. Uh, dirty twenty. Nice. Nice work. Nice work. You know what? I'm gonna use uh, inspiration. <clears throat> is inspiration a d6 with us, or is it a reroll? It's a reroll. Okay. I'm definitely using uh, an inspiration because I rolled a two. Nat 20 for Karis and a 17. Yeah, I'm going to re-roll as well. For... A 2 on Tuesday on 2 22 22. Nice. A 16. 16. All right. So all of you say, uh, you're all able to hold your footing. The acre becomes slippery on these stairs. They are solid stone. There's not a lot of room. But all of you are able to kind of hold your footing and uh, avoid slipping down 60 feet. Yeah. of solid stone stairs. Uh, and you begin to make your way further down. Um, as you get about to the fifth roundabout, you have not encountered any other creatures. It's taken you maybe about a minute and a half. 
You hear chanting and the sounds of pickaxes on bone. Can I? What kind of chanting? Uh, do any of you speak? <sighs> I think it's infernal. Definitely not. Does holy halflings <laughs> count? Uh, so I think Karis is the only one that actually understands what's being chanted. Is that through comprehend language or? Nope, she just speaks infernal yeah. as a tiefling. As a tief. I'd like to... Okay, as a tiefling, never mind. I forgot she was I... a tiefling. <laughs> I would just like to get a sense of how many voices I think there are. There are... Roll me a perception. And we'll see how many you can kind of... 28? He's <laughs> <It's> a wheeze. <laughs> So it sounds about six people chanting. Okay. Uh, I guess we all agree they're up to no good. Yeah. I I would say that anything down here, with the exception of us, is up to no good. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> do we want to try and sneak in, or we go guns blazing? Sneaky, sneaky. And as I say it, I put my cloak up. Sure. We'll try to sneak in. But you sound like you have some doubts, so if you have some doubts, you should probably voice the doubts right now before we touch your finger. No, no, I think sneaking's good. Graham, I'm going to start sneaking down the hallway while pulling out my flute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool, thank you for the biddies, Stomosis. Uh, so I guess we're going to do another group stealth roll. Uh, all of you make that at disadvantage, unless you already had advantage, because the squelch of the Icar... Mm-hmm. The squelch of right. a baker. Yes. <clears throat> Ooh, that was a really good 12 I don't get to use. Uh, we, uh we have in Dex. Douglas, you have inspiration. Dexter. Uh, Steve, who's your inspiration for? Oh, cool. Is chat so generous to you all tonight? I'm gonna use my Maggie, last you have an inspiration from chat. Oh good, because now I'm I have use... another one because I need to re-roll that three. I'm gonna can I use this inspiration to re-roll the Yes. Go die? Okay. We've got two more inspira Wow, y'all are going Ooh. crazy. Rue, you have Question. an inspiration. Rue two inspiration. Could I use uh, a bonus action of Steps of the Night to fly over it and yes. just do a straight roll? Uh Karis awesome. and Dindrell are definitely flying. Thank you for the inspiration. Golaneth, oh, one for resistance. Golaneth. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, chat. We're all gonna die. Yeah, oh, I don't like... I, I, this is like the part where you go to the room that has all the potions and like all the ammo and everything. Oh, see, the problem is that's what the shopping episodes that you all wasted splitting up the party. <laughs> We're supposed to go to. <laughs> Shh, don't tell us that. Shh. I had My some stealth very was 15. good tea. I know. <laughs> oh gosh, it's like the other group. They're like, I bought a cloak that lights on fire randomly. <laughs> they're like, why did you spend the money I, for it? Honestly, I didn't even think about shopping, and that was an in-character thing, but like enough so that I, as a player, was just totally unstrategic. I never I think, think about shopping. I don't think we had a ton of money. That's true. You got paid also upon true. completion, and you had plenty of magic items. Well, anyway. I'm yep. looking at, I've got 21 gold. I don't know how much we got paid. Five. <laughs> Whatever. It is what it is. 18 on myself. All right. 18. 17. 17. 15. 15. 
Or do uh, 20, Gollum 20. steal them? Mine's 27. Okay. Alright. You begin your descent quickly and stealthily. I feel a sneeze coming off. So, oh. Bless you. I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn Bless it. Bless you. Oh. Zuni tight. Alright. Oh man, my ears both popped. That sucks. <laughs> uh, it's the worst. All right, you both, you all continue on heading further and deeper down into the depths. The air is fetid, cold, and the scent and taste of tar and oil mixed with iron fills your nostrils and is prevalent. Steps after steps are that slick, um, kind of frictionless environment as you make your way down. The chanting continues, growing louder and louder, echoing and reverberating off the walls. And the sound of picks on bone grow louder. Kink! Kink! reach the bottom of the stairs and there is a series there is a stone door it is about eight feet tall at an angle at the top and then rectangular down the sides engraved in the handles is a screaming maw with teeth carved out to stick your hands and grab red glowing runes written in a language none of you except for Karis understand is written on the outline. Karis, for her, par her part, pulls out her notebook and starts writing it down. Uh, um, has it... it says, Here they lie forevermore I don't know what it means I said that I know I don't want to stick my hands in there I stick my hand in there <laughs> I love you call enough <laughs> yeah okay Roll me, a... <laughs> Roll me an intelligence saving throw, please. Okay. Perception and investigation, presence of secret doors, saving throws to resist traps. Okay. You I said intelligence you, yeah. save? Yep. Okay. I think with the feet. Okay. That's a, uh, that's a 13 on the die, plus 5 for 18. 18. Okay. So. Your fingers latch, and as soon as you latch and pull and feel it give, you feel the energy coursing from the red written runes on the door, spiraling through the interlaced connections of the door, streaking towards your hand. You're able to wrench the door open and let go before it reaches. And I all just... of you see this Ma's eyes kind of light up, and the teeth kind of into the door. So it's more locked. No, so the door is open and on the Oh, floor. okay. I just look at Beldus and go, Woo! <laughs> uh -huh. And then I kind of, I just um, roll to the right, look down that angle and kind of see what I can't see and clear the room before I slowly open the door. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, no. I hope it's this, not nuts. I'm allergic to this. Ice cream. Ice <laughs> cream, baby. Ooh, ice cream. Yeah. Chocolate sundaes? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, chocolate. Pizza party. In, yeah, I mean, chocolate in that Iktar like Iker is kind of like chocolate if no. you pretend real hard. Uh, I, I have the best chocolate in the world, by the way. Ooh. 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 Okay. Mm. Mm. Wait. Quick question, Graham, before we go to far. You said the ichor is about three inches deep down here, right? Yeah. 
all I needed to know. It's three inches deep here. It was three inches deep there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move you on to a page in Roll20. No, mm -hmm. no, we're fine right here. Battle map. Battle you sure map. you don't want this to just be a pizza party? Because I'm down for pizza. Oh, would you look at that? Oh, must, oh, wow. I must have somehow joined the wrong campaign because this looks like a bad time. Okay, so... Do I see this before we're actually through the door? Yeah won't matter because they already knew you were coming. Bastards. <laughs> uh, some of their perceptions are fairly high. So there's there's no way I can... I, I will say this. Before you get into the actual physical room, after you've opened the door, you can back out so they don't, won't have visibility of you. Huh? Um, I, if you would like some last minute planning. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. doubt we would have all just rushed through yeah, the door. Yeah. We would have. Yeah, no, once I noticed it, I just kind of, I put my arms back and just kind of move everyone back just a little bit, but keeping myself in the front. And then um, I just look back and I say, there's nothing pleasant beyond these doors. All right, all right for the description of what's beyond these doors. Re I am. Resistance, Beldus, re resistance. <laughs> <laughs> beyond these doors is a fetid bog tar and air. Destroyed metal contraptions of almost like what you would find in the Bronze Bastion kind of cover this enormous corpse. This cavern is about 600 feet by it goes on for miles. But all you can see is a unburied top of a hand that is large Larger than a titan, or a giant, larger than anything you have ever seen before. And there are six individuals, each dripping ichor, wearing robes of black, wearing these amulets. The amulets themselves have the symbol of a eye looking into a mirror. Between them is this green portal that has been conjured into the floor with streaks of green bell energy crackling off of it and standing inside of it is a being that is giant, made of shadow itself, something you have seen before, a Nightwalker. There is a small pathway of carved bone and metal. Standing between you and those chanting is Gagri, once more, looking unharmed as a dwarf with their large hat and their twirled mustache. And another individual, dressed in black plate armor, holding a shield and sword. Their shield etched with that same symbol, made of black iron, the color of a night sky. And their long sword is drawn. It has red sigils glowing on the blade. The hilt is the color of raven's feathers, and the, the uh, pommel is a singular eye that is encased in glass that seems to flicker and move, looking around. All right, what's our plan? And by the way, Rue, I don't think we completely killed uh, Gagri. He's back. Yeah, I was afraid of that. It, the light we saw from your god destroyed a lot of them. Would it maybe work on these? I think we could use whatever help we can get. Uh, I mean, if I had to guess maybe I mean hopefully um, yeah, that sounds like a yes <laughs> I, I mean that's all I got so if it doesn't work then it's 
it's these. <laughs> I can hit them with it the same time as you. Do uh we can fairly assume that these like six chanting things are maybe bringing about this creature. They are either summoning it, holding it at bay. Oh shit. Oh no. Or they fucking choices. Are... <laughs> They're doing something you don't understand, but it could be any of those two so, things. There's no... It doesn't look like the thing is moving from the circle. So Gadri is... Yeah, Gadri is right here. Blocking us. Blocking you along with this individual with the sword and shield. And they are either summoning or holding at bay. The mining and the sound of picks on bones seems to be further. Further down the cave? Yeah. Cool. Can I ask a quick question about sure. what we saw when we were walking through the city? Um, and I don't know if Maggie would have the ability to sort of distinguish that, but like these are gross creatures doing necrotic like kind of damage, like eroding people and turning them into ichor. And I'm dropping resistance and I'm. I'm preparing to cast Aura of Life. Okay. As soon as oh. as soon as soon somebody in my group or in their group makes an aggressive action, I'm casting Aura of Life. Sure. Um, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm, I'm just, I'm spitballing over here. I'm just going to say, Rue will look to Maggie and say, I, I don't know if what these six are doing, but I'm assuming they're they're up to uh, no good, so I'll take half, you take half? That sounds good. I'm preparing oh. Aura of Life. Free preparing Sunday. <laughs> Alright, Aura of Life, is that a concentration spell? It is, but I'm... Yes, and we just planned that we were going to do it, so yeah, Aura of Life, I'm going to cast before we do anything, and then I'm preparing Sunday. Okay. Each non-hostile creature in the area has resistance to necrotic, and its hit point maximum can't be reduced. In addition, non-hostile living creature regains 1 HP. Okay. Good enough. So you summon up this, and you hear... I thought you said they were going to be arriving soon. I grow bored of waiting. I was told... told that I would not have to wait any longer. Minutes may be inconsequential to you, Gagri, but they are an eon to me. If they don't arrive soon, I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to go into the city. I'm going to kill everyone. from the man in the plate. Um, I didn't really describe their looks. They appear to be pale. Uh, their features are pale. Uh, they have pointed ears, like an elf, and jet black hair that is kind of tossed back about waist length behind them. Um, Gagri kind of goes, <laughs> well, now, whoa, whoa, whoa there, friend. Uh, I know they'll be coming, uh, you know, why, why don't we, you know, take a step back, uh, and then at about this time, they notice the doors open, and Gagra goes, well, uh, so, so nice of you all to join us. I just look back and say, I love you all, and I walk in, arms out. All right, so what I would like is I'm going to... And then... And then I just say, it's just me. Now, you and I both know that you are real shitty as a liar. <laughs> the thing about stone <laughs> is it echoes. Now, I can definitely make out the sound of 
one foot set of footsteps compared to two or three. It was Zicker. It's kind of a gray area. Now, why don't you and your friends come out and talk? I mean, after all, I've I I've never uh, started violence towards you. I can talk. All right. What would it cost for all of you to turn away and just walk away from here? I'm going to start walking in the room and I'm going to just push past Goloneth. Okay. Gonna... Well, uh, now you've made oh, simple deal. You... Fine. Cost? Great. Here's what you do. Give me back five generations of my people. Bring back every soul that is trapped in stone behind here that was once your pawn. You end it now, and then I want you to drown yourself in this ichor in front of me. I walk forward too, and I put my hand on Belvis's shoulder. Now, now, now. You, you, you seem to be misunderstanding something. We, we want the same thing. Just miracles have a cost. You miracles just need asking. From who? From a god? You know what? That actually happens more often than you think. Because we've got one right here. Oh. Who's going to float forward as well and join the uh, line of people? Gagarin. Put my other hand on my other hand racial. Gagarin. Well, you talk too much. What purpose do they have in our plan? they need to be living to fulfill them and then this individual looks towards all of you and takes a step forward um, as they kind of take this step forward there is a feeling that follows them it is a sense of almost fear of that unnatural prickle of the threat. And they look towards Rue. Hey! <coughs> you were the one that called the sun here. I yeah, well... It... You know, I thought you could use some of uh... that. Uh, a little sprucing up, get some, uh, get some house plants, uh, you know, it's a little dank down here. Huh. You, uh, no offense, Baldis. Such a mortal thing. Funny. When have the gods listened to anyone else? insight check is this being bored like you know what i mean like over everything or sad or like in what spirit is this like nihilistic stuff coming sure, out sure. of its mouth yeah that's only an eight Hard to tell. Um, 
this individual is it's just very hard to get a pin okay. um i will say you know there are notes of sadness but almost immediately after it is morose boredom followed by you know anger resentment you know it is all over the board without a lot of rational sense got it but at the Reset. end of the day it definitely boils down to you don't get a feeling that this person has any set goal Bree's just gonna like hang hold their hand up a uh, uh, couple couple questions there dark and broody yes yeah, uh, I mean what's 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 your name uh, one, I guess my name's Rue. This is, uh, you know, the, the crew. We got, we got Maggie. We got Feldis. We got Galneth. Uh, Karis back there. Um, Dini. Um, Dini. <laughs> in your tongue, it is. While this is going on, I'd like to uh, kind of fall back and grab Edie and Karis and move them to a place, a safe place, and take up Bruce to myself. And uh, Bruce hiding. gonna be slowly moving forward if possible. Yeah, I, I am uh, definitely taking an offensive position where I can also defend the Edie and Karis. Come again? I'm sorry. You don't speak that tongue. I forgot. Moloch. Archeon of Anarim. Champion of the Dead God. Well, uh, it's very, very nice to meet you. Uh, just two last really quick questions. Uh, uh, are you, are you from, from here? Or did you, are you just visiting in town for work, business, pleasure? And then those, those six over there, are they, uh, are they bringing this, this big guy, big galoot in? Or are they holding him back? What are we thinking here? What, uh, what are we? So, as you take and the she'll step, take like yeah. another step so up. So he will so he will point the blade at you and say, "Not another step." I don't wish to be drastic, but mortals always try to take more than they deserve. And Gagger goes, well, there's there's no reason for you to have to tell them that stuff. I mean, they don't need to know. And he goes, I was from here. Now I'm from nowhere. I'm from a place beyond. If it doesn't matter, then call it off. It's not me doing it. What's doing it then? Him. Try to specify a little bit. He cants his head towards the giant hand. It was his will. As he died a thousand deaths, holding back the starless ones from the void, he wanted this. In his final breaths, 
his final pained breaths across the cosmos. That it wasn't worth it, and none of you deserve what you were given. The point of a gift isn't that you deserve it. Was it a gift? Isn't life a gift? Can you repeat that, Maggie? Isn't life a gift? To some, to others, it's probably a curse. Why do I have a strange desire to comfort this thing? I don't know if I would. I would. I wouldn't. I... It's just a very sad. It's just very, I'm just very sad. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. As I... for the little one's question, it is held for now. Soon it won't be. Soon it will do what it wishes. And then it will return to its master. Far from here. Who is? At this point, Gaggery goes, Now there's no need to tell them any. Don't even answer that. You shut up. I've had enough value, you, you cleaver wheeled maniac. I mean, come on, we're all being culture. You, honestly, you started it. You you started it. Um, you jumped on a table saying, I'll kill you with a cleaver. Yeah, but you kind of, you, let's, let's be honest. I couldn't read you, and then I just assumed that you had ill intent because you work for the rain bike company, and they're, like, bad inherently. We all, we all know these things. It's sort no? of a gray area. <laughs> it's a gray area. Yeah, yeah, gray yeah. Area. Tindrella steps in. Um, also known as go fuck yourself, Gagri. What she said. Now, Dindrella. Dindrella. Why not let bygones be bygones? You can be part of a bit something bigger. I shoot an arrow at his face. Alright, so we're rolling initiative. This is not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we get one surprise? In? Nope. No, you will not. <laughs> all right, let me just get you all on the tracker real quick. And then I'll ask you what you rolled. I rolled so bad. <laughs> and then I have to do all the rolling for everyone else. <laughs> if I'd been a smarter man, I would have, uh, you know, rolled this initiative ahead of time. I forgot that we could roll in roll 20. Yep, just make sure you left click your token before Oof. hitting initiative. Okay, uh, if I don't. Well, can yeah. I keep my IRL roll? Yeah. It's a 19. Okay, I will edit it in a second. If you have any role play you'd like to do while I'm doing this before the arrow gets shot, feel free. You know, I was wondering which one of us was going to attack first, so I was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a pause for restraint, everyone, for the, the for trying out that long. That was. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's not time to really do role play, right? That's you true. As I mean? an like, arrow, right drawn. at the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, a 19 like, for Oh, Rue. shit, is about all we can do. Uh, go 20 off. for Beldus. I'm sorry. For Beldus. Mine's correct in roll 20. Oh, okay. Uh, Maggie. Rue. Sorry, my dog was being cuddly. Eight. Eight. All right. And Rue was a 19. Yes, yeah, sir. Rue. 20. Rue plays uh, banishing that one guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I've got to roll for some other people. 
and we'll see we'll see where this arrow ends up because <laughs> all of this is happening in the same six seconds I asked Andrella who those people are in the pictures. And I just say, you know, in case anything happens, who should I look for? Oh, um... It, it was my son. Was? Um... He's dead. In the war. Damn war. Seems like all we do is fight anymore. I agree. All right, descending order. We also didn't reposition ourselves during that whole conversation. Uh, yeah, so I have moved you up to where Beldus and Goleneth were. Okay. Um, but I know Goleneth person... moved. Yeah, and then Rue took another five feet forward, and that was where they were stopped. Um, Karis is the only one not in the room, so I'm just keeping Karis back, because I don't know what Karis wants to do, so I'm going to just play them as safe as possible. So, start of the round. As you pull back on your arrow, go on up. Gagri gets the first move. And we're going to change the music. Personally, I feel like this is not fun. I can't. This isn't hectic battle music anymore. I can't hear the music again. So oh, no. I didn't even know we had any. I'm just going to say one word, and that word is time. Time? We have 18 minutes. We're not going to finish combat. Okay. <laughs> really? I'm shocked. Yeah. We got no, we actually, got As long this. as it was planned. That's all I'm worried yeah. about. As long as it you was know planned. What? This might be a good spot to stop, or maybe, yeah. That way we'll have Karos here when we fight. It's up to you. Yeah. You could resolve the arrow first. Could resolve the arrow first. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, roll me your attack to hit, Goleneth, and then we'll see what happens. Because they do have Wait, a it hits. <laughs> it hits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what was that, like a plus 20 on my arrow? Yeah. They've got like a plus 8 <laughs> at best. No, no. I, it, yeah, it's a 5 on the die, plus 6 for 11. Okay. Um, so as your arrow streaks through, Gagri... Uh, it's actually 12, I'm sorry. Oh, 12. 12 total? Yeah. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So as you kind of fire your arrow at Gagri, he kind of waves a hand and the ichor just drives up from the ground and kind of intercepts the arrow and pulls it down with a into the depths. Now that was awesome. say, Well, that was a neat trick. Can you what? teach me that? And then I knock another arrow and get ready to fire again whenever I'm able. You know, this doesn't have to come down to violence. All we want is to bring back a god who the other gods sacrificed against their will. I do the Danny Glover lethal weapon. I ready Sunbeam. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's where we're going to end the day session yeah. <laughs> All right, so. It has been a absolute delight to have you all here as it is every other Tuesday. Uh, I'd like to know three things from all of you. Uh, who are you? Where can we find you? And what are some cool projects you're working on? Hi, Hi. I'm Bob. I went first. <laughs> Stealing the <laughs> issue. <laughs> uh who am i i am bob uh you can find me on here every other tuesday for next week when we start a fight yay um otherwise i am on twitter you can find me at cyclor one i think there's a link in the chat on that right now 
other than that, I really don't have much going on in the interweb world at this time here. Uh, still doing some stuff that uh, Jen will talk about in better detail. Um, and it's fun. It's good. Support that cause. That's all I got for the night. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. So go to Jen. I'm Jen. And oh, you can find me on Twitter at Quixote Jen. Um, and I'm sorry, am I too far away from the mic? Is that what that is? No, that was me trying I'm, to figure out where you were. Oh, okay. I think I'm above you. I think you're right. Um, I'm Jen. You can find me at Quixote Jen. Um, and uh, you can also follow Play Counselor Away on Twitter. Um, and what we're doing there is we are providing fun and joy for fellow cancer patients uh, and for people who've been touched by cancer in other ways. Um, right now, by doing offline games, we may start doing some online stuff or on stream stuff, but we're going to keep doing that. So if your life has been touched by cancer and you want like a fun group of people to share joy and laughter with who get it, um, follow us on Twitter um, and hit us up. Uh, and I have a bunch of stuff like kind of in the works, but I don't have any like, and this is when to say. So I'll just say fun stuff in the works. I need to join y'all's Discord, but um, I've kind of found it. I'm playing Gullineth, and I have a lot of cool stuff planned and a lot of stuff I'm trying to get involved in. But other than that, I'm just um, getting... Uh, I've got a lot of photography stuff planned, like especially in March. I'm taking um, two trips, and then I think in maybe October, I'm going to Colorado. So i got all kinds of shit planned. So follow me on the other Twitter, and if you're keen on photography, then send me a message, and I might dial you in on all of my photography stuff. Otherwise, keep on rocking in the free world. Woo! Keep on rocking in the free world. Uh, hi, I'm Adam. I'm Islamist everywhere. Um, right, I'm here every other Tuesday. I think I've got one game coming up in august so very far away and another game i don't know if we're gonna stream it I mean, maybe podcast it so uh, it's it's in the works tpd and then um i think rue will uh also cock their head and say diplomatic immunity it's just been revoked and then cast <laughs> punishment <laughs> diplomatic immunity <laughs> I'm Graham. I played Karis tonight, who would have been played by Kari, who was out because, you know, they couldn't be here. Uh, but if you want to, you know, hang out with Kari, you can find them playing Guild Wars 2, which is getting an expansion on the 28th, where we will go back to Kantha, which is a really cool place. Uh, I love Guild Wars 2. I met Kari on Guild Wars 2, and that's how we became roleplay buddies. Uh, so we'll both be there. You can find us there. As I'm there, she is a Graham Crackers exclusive. You'll find her nowhere else. Uh, and as for me... Hi, everybody. My name is Graham or Graham Crackers. You can find me at Graham Crackers one at Twitter, or you can find me at, well, you've already found me if you find me on Twitch. So, <laughs> ta-da, I'm here. Uh, but uh, I had the wonderful pleasure of playing every evil villain and sloppy sludgy boy today, uh, which was an absolute delight. Um, but you can find me here DMing every Tuesday, not just for Shards of Narn and Anarin's Rest, but I also play on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard as Geharis and Lervo's Blackmont, who just found out their dad is the BBEG, who he thought was oh, dead. No. So him and his what? brother now might have to go kill his dad. We don't know yet. We, haven't, we don't have a plan. <laughs> but uh, it is really intense. Uh, I wasn't ready for that reveal. But outside of that... I can be found, uh, mm -hmm. you know, guest starring on the podcast uh, Roads Uncharted, where I am playing Dawson Sawyer, who is an old, old veteran that just wants to find his adventuring party that went missing, that he has assumed were dead from over 20 years ago. So he can Three days from retirement. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. This is his one big last adventure. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i just want my my buddy's bones to bury them <laughs> yeah. and everyone and, and the rest of the party are like what's being an adventurer like yeah. i'm three days for my pension 
trauma the adventure uh but outside of that i'm always looking to play in new games or to test things out uh but uh we have also opened up casting for dms on the channel so if you have not taken a look at that you can find hey. it on my twitter uh which I should pin, which I will have to do after this. But uh, we are uh, accepting applicants until uh, March 19th, after which every person who applies will get a one-shot to DM, and, you know, we will see if things are good fit. Uh, so we are casting for numerous positions and slots, so I hope to see some new faces and new friends there. Afterwards, once that's kind of worked out, we will... Uh, Spend about a month discussing plot and what the story is and what they'd like. And then we'll work on casting. Because um, here at Graham Crackers, I think everyone deserves a chance. And I think that it is unfair to make casting decisions if you've never played with somebody. That's my hot take, Twitter. But uh, outside of that, I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic rest of the night. Uh, as usual, you know... We are all about making memories here, and we're glad that you get to join us every week to make memories because it is a, uh, it's very important to us that you are all here. So I hope you stay ha healthy, stay happy, and we will see you soon. So until then, bye for now. Remember to